Urban agriculture is a very, very simple, although quite technological in some cases, and I'll show you later on, uh, way of showing what circular economy is about, how we can have a positive impact. And here, I'm going to talk to you about the way we can change the procedure to select architects, engineers, or even select projects, or even change the rules for uh, developments at administrative level. How can we bring progressive or uh, adaptive master planning? You know, normally you, you, you design a master plan and this is set, cast in stone for the next 20 years because it's very difficult to change afterwards. And we, we, we managed to find a way in, uh, in, in Sweden. Circular economy is about creating a vision. If I want to say that uh, I find a building, or I find, let's, say, let's say we find a district in, in Bucharest, and we decide that that district will be the district with clean air, and this productive, producing food, producing energy, and all that. Positive building, positive district. How can we do that? You cannot do everything at the same time. You need to set a vision of what you want, and that vision needs to be shared by all stakeholders public sector, private sector, and all the people are going to design it, build it, or, or uh, supply the elements for it. And until you have that vision, you cannot do much. If you don't start with a vision, then you start with a quantity. And I have no, nothing against uh, certifications, but I know their limits. Every time I worked in that, and I've worked on a number of projects in France, which could go much further than the regulation was asking. I was always saying, if the regulation is saying this today, when your building will be finished in two or three years' time, it will probably be, be already obsolete compared to the new regulations or, 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 or what is coming, because it is changing all the time, and it's, which is a good thing, it's improving. So why not go straight a lot further and make sure we find a way to pay for it, rather than trying to you know, just reach the level and then when it's built, I mean, take a hospital, a hospital takes 10 years from, from, from order to, to opening. Uh, the equipment in a hospital is going to change completely from the time it's ordered until uh, or the technology in the hospital will change. How can you design something today which will open in 10 years and you don't even know how it's going to work in 10 years? So everything there needs a vision to make sure that you can adapt and, uh, and avoid obsolete buildings. What we do is to do the inventory of what we have. That's the most important thing, especially in renovation. It's also true for, for, for new buildings because what we have is a district, is a site, is a climate, is a biodiversity around, is the quality of water, the underground, all these things need to be taken into account. What we've done so far, which is good, but not enough, is to minimize the negative impact. And what we're talking about today with circular economy and, and, and from cradle to cradle, is how to optimize positive impact. If you do both, you end up with only a green line, or a little bit of red. But this is necessary, and this is, in fact, what creates not economies, but new economy. Uh, new, new, new economies in terms of new business, new, uh, new technologies, or just sometimes going back to very simple things and forget about the technologies that we, we, uh, we, we got wrong in the first place. To summarize it, if you start with even a small building, start with the urban vision. It's a, you know, Google Earth is an excellent tool for me. You just, you don't need a helicopter anymore. You just, you just uh, zoom back and you come with an urban vision. I want this building to have a positive impact on its neighbors. Rather than fighting the neighbors, take the neighbors in. It sounds naive, but it works. And I've never had a case where it doesn't work. If you talk to the neighbors and say, I'll do something here, but there will be something for you, so do you agree that I build a bit higher, I do a bit this, I do that? And you can negotiate if you take them in. If you don't take them in and you, you, you present your projects, you, you, you know it well, we present the project, and it's a fait accompli, it's a, something that's uh, you know, finally designed and already filed for, for planning application. Everybody says, ah, no, I don't want this, yeah, not, in, not in my backyard. So I think it's very important that all the stakeholders are taken into account, and then you, you, you define the project principles. Uh, it's the same as the first diagram. And then the goals, you integrate this notion of positive impact. 
And then as usual, you look at the site, at uh, the water strategy, energy strategy, materials, interior quality environment, and, and exterior as well. In fact, uh, here I'm talking about the air mainly, and uh, acoustics and waves and, and all these things. And food production is something I added recently. I think food production has to be part of our cities. Now, all these strategies, they, they existed before, but I think we all agree that we concentrated on energy. And energy is probably the thing I'm going to talk less about today, because I think there is a lot done about energy, and energy is quite obvious. The technologies are there. It's quite obvious that it makes money by just saving energy, or it makes money by selling energy. I, I personally prefer the tree, and uh, this was actually uh, McDonough and, and Bromgaard that uh, took the, the idea of a tree because uh, well, a, a tree harvests energy, as you said. Um, it, it creates its own habitat, but also habitat for other species. It has all it needs to create its microclimate, and it doesn't need any artificial means. It creates shadow, it creates uh, air movement, uh, it, it cools the ground, it works even with geothermy in a way, uh, it creates its own natural uh, ventilation. And then everything to do with, of course, uh, nutrient recycling through the ground, creating humus, uh, being transformed, uh, improving soil uh, for, for other species to, to grow. A building should never become redundant. That doesn't mean that it's there forever, but it should be able to adapt to its use or change of use. That doesn't mean that, in, in, in fact, you have big mistakes that have been done in France in general, is to empty them, keep the facade and do something else inside because the original buildings were, were in general very good. Renewable energy, I said I will not speak too much about energy. Renewable energy is good if you don't produce waste while you create the elements, whether it's geothermy or windmills or solar panels. Capture CO2. CO2, this is, this is for me the biggest uh, shift in mind. For everybody, CO2 is a greenhouse gas effect uh, material. And CO2, like people are, you know, what it, CO2 is dangerous, it, it, it feels like it's a dangerous gas. In fact, it's not. I mean, we all breathe it, and it, this is the raw material of nature. This is what plants consume to make carbon on one side and to uh, reject O2. Uh, so, what we say is rather than having low carbon buildings, we want to have positive carbon buildings, buildings that capture CO2. There are many technologies in the, in the industry already. Do you know that uh, when, when you drink uh, decaffeinated coffee, it's been done with uh, some sort of uh, uh, CO2? There are some people in China who are uh, developing, well, it's the States but already starting in China as well, who are creating plastic from collecting CO2 in the air. So basically, rather than using petrol, it's collecting CO2 in the air. This is coming, and it's coming fast. And I think it will, it will grow uh, very fast. 